a little earlier today to make this video. Um, it's that time of the year again where, you know, I'm just sort of due for a pickups video. It's been, how long has it been? November 7th. November 7th. So that's coming up on like four months or five. Yeah, at the end of this month, it'll be five. Anyway, long overdue. It's time for a pickups video. This is gonna be everything I've picked up in the last four or five months. So if you've seen it in a vlog, too bad you're gonna see it again because I'm gonna talk about it in depth. And because this is a lifestyle channel, I'm gonna be a little more holistic with my pickups. So we're, we're, we have some electronics, we have some miscellaneous items, jewelry, accessories, and some travel goods, just because I am going on a trip very soon, undisclosed location. So kicking off the electronics, I finally got a new camera or an actual camera. I kept telling myself, oh, once I reach this milestone or that milestone, then I'll treat myself to a camera. But I've been making vlogs for like a few years now. So, you know, once upon a time, in order to start a channel, you need an actual camera. iPhone cameras were not good enough to be vlogging, you know, once upon a time. And now, I mean, everything I was able to do on my iPhone, now that I have a camera, we're gonna go crazy with it, you feel me? So the camera I purchased is the Sony ZV-E10. The reason why I bought it is because it's mirrorless and I can interchange lenses and I just wanna really familiarize myself with those capabilities and those functions. I love that the screen, I can finally see myself so I'm not just, you know, guessing with my iPhone, like, am I in frame? Am I not in frame? Um, the autofocus is pretty good. I, the camera's gonna be good for like product showcase, which you guys will see in this video. You know, finally have an actual camera and a pretty decent one. It's, you know, I was looking at a couple other models. What is it, the A7 II? A7 A7 II, A7 III, they're all like pretty old now. We're on the A7 IV as of right now, so. This camera, I think it was released in 2021, so fairly new. Yep, so just uh, let me know if you guys see a difference, really. On to the next electronic, yeah. I'll call it an electronic. So I got gifted these Bluetooth earphones for Christmas, and these are the Kef Mu 3, designed by Ross Lovegrove. I don't know too much about Kef, but this earphone really caught my eye. The AirPods Pros, I've had the AirPods, I've had the AirPods Pros. They don't really sit in my ear that well. These, they sit in my ear like pretty comfortably, but they're also not good for like exercise. For a while, I didn't know where my AirPods Pros were. So this was like a very timely gift. I have since found them, but I just, I love the design of this, I love the look, I love like, I can't say it's better than the AirPods Pros, but it's definitely cheaper in, in terms of price point. And I think they look nicer and just, if you wanna separate yourself, I feel like everybody has AirPods Pros, not that that's an issue or anything. The real issue is the AirPods Pro and Max, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna delve into that topic. Anyway, new Bluetooth earphones, Kef, uh, I love the design by Ross Lovegrove. My Issei watch is also designed by Ross Lovegrove, so shout out him. He's got a real, real eye for these types of things. We're moving into the outerwear. This is an acquisition from my London trip. Something I, I wanna touch on for this video is like when it comes to like pickups, you guys all know I'm obsessed with helmet, but I don't wanna be a bot NPC just non-stop talking about helmet and helmet pickups. There's really like no helmet pickups in this video. This is for all my archivists out there. So right here, I have an IS, it's a sport care label bomber. This is um, a nylon iteration and it's actually in a color that I typically do not buy. It's a navy blue, very dark. So it's not, I mean, no, I would say it's pretty, you can, you can probably tell even with this lighting, you can, you can tell that it's blue and not black. Yeah, I got this at a store called Storm in a Teacup, archive store in London, East London, and I got it for 280 pounds. So a fun little story. Um, the person that wanted to buy this asked the store to put it on hold and they just never came in and to, to buy it. So the owners are like, you know, like 
fuck it, we're putting it back out on the rack. And then I happened to walk in that day and then just bopped it, you know what I mean? 280 for, you know, a piece of the late great Issey Miyake's work. This is a fraction of the price I paid for my other Issey Care Label Bomber. That one was like, oof. Obviously that one's nicer. Wool, leather sleeves, a very rare color. This is, I'd argue not as rare, but for the price point and the materials and with spring coming up, you know what I mean? By the way, I'm making this video because I gotta unload the outerwear content just because we're approaching spring. So some key differences, um, there's an extra pocket on the arm. I don't have that on my other IS Care label and it's just lighter. It's lighter and it's more of like a windbreaker almost. It's more of like a shell. The other one is uh, more structured and heavier, um, this one. And this one's a little more banged up. Condition-wise, it's a little more beat up. The IS is a little faded in the back. Very cool. I don't know if I'll sell it later on, just because, you know, this is just memorabilia at this point. I never find archive shopping like on vacation and definitely not at this price point. So incredible, very happy with this. All right. Next, I have this light down jacket, goose down jacket by Snow Peak. I don't own any clothing from Snow Peak. I didn't even know they were nice like this, to be honest. Like, this is a really nice puffer, thoughtfully designed, warm, um, but light, light. Emphasis on the light, just because it's, I don't know about where you guys are at, but here in Chicago, it is still like ranging between 30s and like tops 55 degrees. So it's still like cold enough to wear a puffer. Maybe not my nupsy, maybe something a little lighter like this, for instance. And I got this at a store called Trespien in London for 50% off. So got it for an incredible price. This was the last medium that they had. I love the color. It reminds me of this Rick puffer that I tried on in New York at Dover Street maybe a couple years ago. There's no branding, so you really don't know what this is unless you look at the tag. And I love this. It's it's like a duo zip design, so on both sides you can unzip and then there's two zippers on each side so you can zip up and down. You can cinch the hood, you can cinch the waist. It's just very like gorpy, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it's it's toned down because there's no branding. You, you don't know what this is. And the color is beautiful. This is, I'm, I just love olive. So there's not much else to say about this. I love puffers, I love olive, and I don't own a light down jacket, 50% off. Like who wouldn't, come on. Next up, this is, getting a little crazy with it because I finally have a vest. I don't wear vests. This is the first vest I've ever owned and it's from Stussy. So while we're on the topic of Goose Down, this is a Goose Down puffer vest. Perfect for this like awkward weather that we have here in Chicago where we're transitioning from winter to spring. You can just throw this over a hoodie. I was at the Stussy, I, this was also a London pickup. I was at the Stussy store in London and I'm just walking around, didn't really see anything. And I feel like I didn't even see this on the rack. Maybe someone put it back or something. It looked like this when I pulled it off the rack because this is actually a reversible vest. And I tried it on and I was like, wow, this is really nice. The puffiness, it really reminds me of um, the helmet bulletproof vest which is something like it's a grail of mine but then when you reverse it it's giving bottega in my in my opinion at least i mean you guys might disagree and i just don't like branding the only real branding is this little like logo here but it's so it's so like discreet you don't see it unless you look for it size m um, this is just new season stussy experimental because I don't wear vests, but this is just something fun. It's white outerwear, which I don't own a lot of. You can still purchase, not this exact color, but something similar, meaning the inside might be the same, but the outside has like this like cow hair look to it. And I think those are available on Essence or Notra. Preferably, I like this. It's just clean and simple, which is how I tend to dress. Two front pockets on each side and then zippers 
reversible because the vest is re reversible. And yeah, pretty warm too, actually. Moving on to, I can't tell if this is outerwear or just like a top. So I'm gonna throw it in the top section of this video. And moving into the tops, I have another Stussy pickup from the Stussy store out in London, Soho London. And this is this blue and white, like pinstripe shirt. The thickness is almost like a, like a coach jacket or something. There are these snap buttons and very, very discreet front pockets here. This is what makes me like compare it to a coach jacket, you know, the snap buttons and then the two front pockets. So I feel like everybody can use like this blue and white pinstripe button up. A lot of brands have their own version of it. I own like a very cheap JW, a Uniqlo one that I've been wearing for years. I've seen, you know, Bottega's version, which is also very nice. But this is just like that in between it's i think it's you know very structured so you can like wear a shirt underneath or you can wear it alone and i just love the snap buttons really this is just so sick to me on the back there's a big stussy logo and i you know me i don't like big branding but this is very subtle like i don't know if you guys can see it because majority of the shirt is white and then the branding is white. So I think this is a tasteful Stussy piece. I'm not gonna lie. I've worn it once. I plan on wearing it several times. Outfit repeater. I don't see this leaving the wardrobe just because of like how fun and how like quintessential something like this is. So very happy with this pickup. Okay, I bought this very recently. It is the new box tee from our legacy. And I got this tee because I love my two bare knuckles tees. One's like a thicker cotton and then one's a little thinner. And then this one's like super, super thin, like so thin. And I just love this color. It's just this like dark gray, just goes with everything, you know? Something in between white and black, is it's just perfect. And yeah, that's that was uh, what drove me to this purchase. It was also on sale. So always want to, you know, capitalize on the SN sales. Tag's still on it because I haven't really worn it yet, but surely I will, especially with the warmer weather. The thinner tee is going to come in handy. This is my first Our Legacy pickup. I mean, granted, it's just a t-shirt. Our Legacy is a really cool brand, in my opinion. It's something that I've been looking at for a while. I keep my eye on various brands, even if I don't shop them necessarily. The lady got a really cool skirt out in London, and yeah, I'm just warming up to a lot of their stuff. Camion mules, I think they're sick. Boots, eh. The mules are really cool though. I'm very particular about tees and how they fit, and the color and how wearable it is, so I'm very happy with this. We're moving into the bottoms. I have two pairs for you guys. These. I picked up from Sovereign here in Chicago. These are the JW Anderson utility trousers. And these are dope. These are really cool because they got these big like 3D pockets on the front. So we have three pockets, one, two, three. And um, the back has like their like JWA emblem embroidered. So it's very subtle, you probably can't see. Drawstrings inside. I feel like all the pickups are a little like, you know, offline and not very representative of like my usual style just because I like, for example, these pants, I don't really like wearing like boxy wide fitting pants. These pants are quite wide fitting. They're convertible too, so you can convert them into shorts. And even this material, I don't own any pants in this material. It's giving, um, if you guys have ever owned a pair of like needles track pants, it's that exact material. I bought these because they're giving Kiko. They're giving Kiko. The price was insane. These retail at 650 and the price dropped down to 115. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy these and have my fun with them. And they're gonna be perfect because I can convert them. They're pretty light. I wouldn't wear these if I'm trying to stay warm. We're transitioning into spring, summer. So these are useful, they're fun. They don't really, when I think JWA, I think very like colorful. These don't like, if I didn't tell you they're JWA, you probably would not know that they're JWA. First time buying like actual JWA because I don't consider like JWA Uniqlo like real JWA. It's just like collab stuff, you know? I have the JWA tee, but that was gifted. So first time actually buying some 
JW Anderson. You know, these are size medium. Could have went with the small, but they didn't have it. So whatever, for the price, I just can't pass up. Last pair of pants. So I have here, this is also an Essence pickup. These are just the North Face sweatpants in a black color. I have two pairs of the Stussy sweatpants that just have like the little Stussy logo there. The lady took the black pair, so I needed a new black pair. And frankly, I, I think I like these more than the, the black pair just because they're lighter so I can wear them still like as we transition into the warmer weather. And then, you know, my daily driver for the winter time is my Nupsi and my thermal ball mules. So I just, it just looks like a, a North Face campaign when I walk out wearing like head to toe North Face, which is cool. I don't mind it at all. I got a size medium. They are a little shorter and a, a little less loose fitting than like the Stussy sweats, but they're fine. I mean, I think people wear these for their functionality, like going on hikes and whatnot, not really like for style points. So they're nice, they're light, they're comfy. I wish they had a back pocket, but you know, $60, this is what you get, you know what I mean? Moving on to shoes. These are those thermal ball meals I was talking to you guys about. This is my daily driver. They are like, they don't look that cooked because I just like one round with the Clorox wipes and they look good as new, but like, the true sign that they are cooked is the back because there's insane pilling going on. So these mules are so sick and the fact that they're so dirty um, on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see. So what's cool about these mules is that the back kind of drops. I guess that's what makes it a mule, right? The fact that you can slip on like this. You can wear that up or you can wear them down. I call this one sport mode and then this is just, you know, you're coasting. And yeah, when the pant hits and covers the entire mule. They look really cool and they're insanely comfortable, perfect for cold winter time. You don't even need to wear socks actually because there's a lot of like fur inside or whatever. It's really warm, great for the airports, great for traveling because of this like slip on feature and the fact that they're light and like very portable. You could throw them in your bag whatever the case, for $60, and I didn't even pay 60, I got them for like, I wanna say 40 bucks. These are definitely very popular because they've, they've been selling out in a lot of different sizes for many reasons, you know? This has just been my daily driver for like the last couple months, wearing these nonstop. I don't even reach for a different pair, I just slip these on and I'm gone, you know what I mean? I'm gone with it. Last pickup as far as footwear goes, Another mule. These are um, the New Balance 2002Rs. I like the color. I personally like the color. It's like this brown orange. And I got this a while back off the Notra sale. I think this was like 50 bucks or less, which is just nuts. So yeah, for $50, that's just insane. You know what I mean? I have the Bryant Giles collab and I didn't think I'd like them as much as I do. I really enjoy wearing those. This color is another just fun color and new balances are just so comfortable. And the fact that it's a mule is just all the better, you know? Just slip right in and we're gone with it, you know what I mean? Ooh. Needed another coffee break. All right, we're moving on to another section of the video. This segment is bags, accessories, jewelry, etc. Right here, I have the Koss quilted bag. It is the large version. There's a smaller version that's like a purse size. This one, you can wear it as a crossbody. That's how I've been wearing it, as seen on Jenny, who really popularized this. I popped into the Koss store, and I asked if they had this bag, because I've always been a fan of it, but I'm not gonna pay resale or like go looking too hard for it. I asked them if they had it. They were like, sorry, like we don't. These come in very like sporadically and it's usually like one or two bags like max when they do get some sort of shipment. So I was like, oh, like, well, can I leave my number with you guys and let me know if you guys get it or whatever the case. And then surely enough, the next day, literally the next day they call and they're like, hey, you still want this bag? I got two of them for you. And I just popped over to the Gold Coast here in Chicago and just scoop them up. The bag is um, 
like a hundred bucks. A lot of people have an issue with buying costs because they're like, I think sister companies with H&M and like, you know, is this fast fashion? What's fast fashion, you know? like. So I try not to think too much about it. I think this is just a fun bag and I think it looks pretty good for a hundred dollars. Why not? I'm not paying resale, you know? Couple critiques though, it's big, but it's definitely not like meant to carry anything heavy. I used it to store a bunch of stuff as my like carry on bag. And you know, when you load this bag up with too many things or too many heavy things rather, this strap is going to lose its like structure. It's not gonna be puffy anymore. It's gonna be flapped. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but I've seen the ladies like like purse and it's flattened completely. So this is just like, if you wanna put a sweater in here, like, yeah. It's really like an accessory more so than a bag because you can't put too much in here without it like feeling too heavy and un uncomfortable or just like, I think the inside has stretched a little bit because I put too many things in there. What I do like is that there are a couple hidden pockets. There's one on this side and then there's another one on the other side. And they're hidden because they're like right in like that seam. So if you don't own this bag, you wouldn't know where to look for the pocket, you know? So it's cool. It was very trendy. I want to say like definitely last summer it was like super trendy, but I've always thought it was cool. So bought it despite it not being as relevant as it once was. And yeah, I like it. Okay, time for jewelry slash accessories. We'll start off with watches. Watches, and then we'll end with the jewelry, okay? So starting off with my daily driver, this is my G-Shock. And I wear this to the gym, I wear it to work, I wear it, you know, I just wanna beat it up, you know, just like, bang it up and see how far I can push this thing, you know? Got it off of Amazon for like 60 bucks or something like that, and it's just perfect. I like the size, I like how light it is, I like that it's just like black. I've owned many G-Shocks as a kid, and they were like humongous, so it's nice to have a smaller G-Shock that I can wear on a daily basis, and even then it's still like a little big compared to like some of the other watches I own, but it tells me the day, date, time, when I travel, if I bring it with me, I can just change the time zone with the click of the button. There's a light, there's everything you need. Very compact. The reason why I bought this was because when I'm cooking, I really want to be able to tell time. I don't want to wear a nice watch while cooking for many reasons, you know, like oil getting anywhere, like temperature, whatever, like this, if it gets ruined, which I don't think it will, G-Shocks are just built for all of this, you know? Next, I have this Brewmetric Chronograph. So Brewmetric is a um, micro brand. It came with this nice watch roll, which I really like. And yeah, it's a gold chronograph, PVD gold, so not real gold, and it's beautiful. It reminds me of um, some older watches like the Omega Geneva. It has that tapered bracelet. I like that there's no real branding other than like the little coffee bean emblem, which is their like logo. The brand is heavily inspired by like coffee and coffee machines. So me being an avid coffee drinker, coffee addict rather, you know, this is right up my alley. For a watch, you know, a chronograph gold watch, under $500, I think you can't go wrong with this. It's a Seiko movement, and I just love how like simple, yet elegant, yet, I think it looks, you know, expensive, especially if you don't know what it is, but if you go on Reddit, you'll see a lot of differing opinions. A lot of people are like, I don't like PVD gold, I don't like that price point for that movement, yada, 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 right? But it's a sick watch and I wear it all the time. I wore it in London. I don't have to baby it, you know? Not that I baby like my nicer watch, but this I just really like, literally if someone like tried to rob me, I would just give it up, you know? Cause it's just a $500 watch, but it looks smart. It looks expensive. It's tastefully done. Brewmetric is doing some crazy stuff over there. The bracelet doesn't feel that cheap. I thought it would feel like really cheap, but it's pretty nice. 
Last watch, this was um, my graduation gift for finishing my master's program. This is the Cartier Santos. I've shown it in my graduation vlog. The only reason why I'm showing it again is because I wanna talk a little more about the crocodile strap that came in. Love this, the Santos design. Just like that, I take the bracelet off. And then here is that burgundy or maroon crocodile leather strap. Boom, done, simple as that. Man, that is a pretty, pretty watch. I love the Santos with the steel bracelet, but with the crocodile strap, is just very, very nice. I picked out this color because it was the closest to my university colors. Since this was a graduation gift, I thought it was only fitting that I picked out a color that you know represented my uni. So very happy. These straps are, I don't wanna say complimentary, but you get to select one strap with a purchase of a Santos. So it's not really complimentary because you pay for it, you know? But if you wanna buy one separate, like let's say this one gets all beat up and I want another Cartier leather strap, it's $500. So I love this watch for the technology, meaning like how I can easily swap bracelets or straps. And the fact that they give you a steel bracelet they give you a brown leather strap that's in my Cartier box and then you pick out one too. So I was in between a few colors like green. Green would have been really cool, but again, uni. And speaking of university colors, here I have another graduation gift. This was from the lady and it is my Goyard bifold wallet and they're pretty close in color. Not exactly, but that was the idea at least. You guys wouldn't believe how expensive it is to just add this paint, like my initials and then this like stripe right here, that costs a lot because it's like hand painted. And this is just very, very um, almost ironic because I used to have a wallet and then I transitioned to a card holder because I was like, I don't carry cash and like I have no need for a wallet. And then here I am back to a wallet after maybe like a little over five years now. This is super precious to me because it's from the lady and it's a graduation gift. So this will never you know, be replaced. And it's just my first Goyard piece. It's awesome, you know, we have like the three card slots on each side and then um, some additional room for storage behind those card slots. The larger compartment for cash. I guess because Goyard is like from France, from Paris. I've never been there, so I don't know the size of like their bills, but for example, it fits this 10 pound bill very well. But if I try to put USD in there, I have to like fold like one end or the other just to get it in there. So that's a little inconvenient, but it's okay. I still don't carry that much cash on me. You know what I mean? Another leather good. I have here my Margella key ring holder. This was also a gift from the lady. Shout out the lady. She's always, you know, getting me right. And, you know, we have your their iconic, like, I call it like the four corner, like embroidery. That's like the Margella, like, you know. And I love this, love this a lot. So it fits six keys. And then you have like two little like slots on the two ends snap button. I love it. I love it because a lot of people like to use carabiners. I'm one of those people. I've used carabiners in the past, but the problem with that is sometimes I'm not wearing pants with a belt loop, so there's nothing to clip onto. Sometimes I don't want to put like a handful of keys into a jacket and have and risk it like tearing some of the fabric or you know, scratching whatever else is in that same pocket. Like let's say I put my phone and keys in the same pocket, like keys are gonna scratch up my phone, you know what I mean? So it's nice to just have all the keys in like some leather compartment and then I can just throw it in my bag or throw it in a pocket or anything. And there's still like some jingling, but like a little less I'd say. With one of these like key loops, you could probably even clip it onto like a belt loop or something like that you know so this was a this is a very useful gift and I I use it every day you know my keys are my car key everything 
All right, let's wrap up with jewelry. So bag, accessory, jewelry, leather goods, whatever. So first I have this, this is um, from Homer. Finally own something from Homer. Okay, if you guys aren't familiar, that's Frank Ocean's like luxury jewelry brand. This thing is so heavy, the case for it. As you guys can see, there's nothing in there because the hoop earrings are in my ears currently. So these are the diamond hoop earrings. They're lab grown diamonds and I really like the design of them. I used to wear like white gold hoops and then I transitioned to the yellow gold, but you know, sometimes when I'm wearing like too much gold, it makes me feel like too Chinese and it's nice to be able to like rotate out my jewelry. So right now I'm not wearing any gold, but you know, when I'm wearing like my brumetric, I might throw on my gold bracelet or like ring or this or that or my gold hoops you know so it's nice to just have like two sets i personally don't like two-tone anything i think two-tone is atrocious you know i don't like mixing like yellow and like white or yellow and silver and like the gold that i wear is like 9999 or 24 karat so it's super yellow so yeah sometimes i need a break from it sometimes it's a little too much also this this purchase i wanted them when they released last year but they sold out in the smaller size so i asked like someone at home or like contact me when they restock so they put me on like some sort of wait list or whatever and yeah now i have some new homer earrings i think you know they're they're expensive but still cheaper than like if you were to get like cartier hoops or chrome hoops or you know whatever so i'm very happy with them i've been wearing them ever since i got them and yeah happy customer finally i have two um rings here these are both um matching rings with the lady so the first one is from hatton labs and this is like the eternity ring they're like blue heart shaped like stones sterling silver and then this other one it's a similar design except these are like emerald green stones and it's gold instead of silver i don't know if it's real gold probably not you know because i think this was like 35 pounds i got this at a store called uh, nordic poetry in london east london brick lane and then the hatton labs i got it off essence for a fraction of like its retail price so they're really nice they're really cool looking they're quite uncomfortable though i don't know if you guys can tell but like when i put it on my ring finger for instance my two fingers my pinky and middle squeeze it and it's it just hurts you know so i can't wear it for a long period of time but it's it's really cool you know as i mentioned before i am traveling somewhere very very soon so after going to London, I've made some adjustments to my travel necessities. So I swung over to my local Ross and I picked up two suitcases. First one being this, it's a Samsonite. This one is the Cherry Hill. And then this other one, also Samsonite, Bicknell and Cherry Hill are the two model names for these suitcases. They were 85 a pop, which is, you know, much cheaper than a Ramoa, for example, which is, uh, I'm warming up to buying a Ramoa, maybe not like a check bag, cause they throw them around aggressively, but like a carry on for sure. Someone comment and tell me like Ramoas are just not worth it because I feel like I'm just enabling myself and I'm pretty damn good at enabling myself. So I travel a good amount, so it's not like it'll be a poor investment, but it might just be unnecessary. I think like a carry on Ramoa is like north of $600, you know what I mean? So back to these suitcases here. I think they look good, they are very lightweight. So compared to my North Face suitcase that I've been using, you know, this is a fraction of the weight. So a problem I had with the North Face suitcase is that it's too heavy. It's very um, heavy duty, it's built strong, but it also doesn't have four wheels. So I have to drag it, I can't push it, I can't, you know, rotate it well. Yeah, it's just not practical, you know? It's not practical for traving and in the airport and 
I'm super happy with these two suitcases. 85 a pop, they look pretty nice, very sleek. They don't look goofy, you know, or anything like that. And can't wait to use this on my upcoming trip. However, I am not looking forward to that flight. So I want you guys, to, I'm just not telling you because I want you guys to just guess where I'm going because I feel like there's just more fun in that. I am finally going back to Asia, not Japan, not Japan. Uh, next time I go back to Japan, it'll be for reparations, just kidding. If you don't understand that, then open up a history book, ladies and gentlemen. This is a long overdue trip. Lots of things planned, tattoo appointments, getting a haircut, getting a bunch of things done. My chrome glasses, finally gonna add a prescription, you know, gonna be eating good, always eating good, you know what I mean? But the flight is egregious, I have a stop in Istanbul scares the shit out of me. I know like Istanbul, like being the capital is far away from like where a lot of the earthquakes occurred, but still, you know? Yeah, I am not looking forward to that flight. In total, it's gonna be like north of 20 hours. But luckily, the beautiful people over at Vesta Sleep have equipped me with yet another product to Again, enhance my sleep because I have trouble sleeping on the plane. Maybe I have like ADD or something. If I fall out of my sleep, I will just be up for the entire flight watching movies or like doing whatever. I just can't, you know? So right here, I have their loop spiral travel pillow. Look at this thing. I've never seen the design, so this is very novel to me and I think it's a very thoughtful design. I think it's... Perfect, you know, it's a one size fits all. You know? Looks like I broke my neck or something, but it's insanely comfortable. The reason why I don't usually carry a travel pillow is because they don't really move the needle for me, you know? The travel pillows, you snap them in place and there's just too much room. It's not hugging the neck. This one, it's snug. It's, this is, the support on it is insane, you know what I mean? It comes with a nice little pouch where I can store it so that it doesn't get dirty. Another reason why I don't like bringing a travel pillow is because when I clip it onto like my bag or something, it might like rub on other stuff and it's just disgusting, you know what I mean? So this is, this is amazing. Thank you Vesta Sleep for sending this over. It feels very comfortable and premium and thoughtful design, one size fits all, memory foam. Currently, it's on sale for 30% off, so I would just go and snag one as soon as possible. And if you use my code, VESTAGEN, you get an additional 5% off of that. So if the other products didn't catch your eye, this surely will because it is just, I think you can use this even when you're not traveling. <laughs> it's amazing, eco-friendly, Shout out Vesta Sleep. That wraps up this video. Make sure to comment below where you think I might be going. I already gave you a hint, Asia, not Japan, not China. I was gonna go back to my hometown and vlog it and show you guys, you know, where I was born and whatnot. But Xi Jinping playing too many damn games, you know, froze my like 10 year visa and only recently allowed us to use that again. So yeah. Let me know also how I should parse up the upcoming content. I'm thinking there'll be more topic focus. So street food or shopping are their own separate videos instead of just doing like, you know, morning to night vlogging each and every day. So I think I'll be also just doing more uh, shorts and things of that nature. I'm super excited. There's gonna be so much content. There's gonna be so much to do. This is a trip I've been looking forward to for a very long time, more so than going to London even. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Somebody commented on a, one of my videos and mentioned that it was very difficult to find my channel. So if you guys know somebody that would be interested in the type of content that I post on this channel, then be sure to, you know, spread it word of mouth and you know just share share the channel with somebody else that you know might resonate with me or what I'm doing over here because with the new camera and with the upcoming content I just for my ego I need to be at like 10k subs so 
you know, help out the boy, getting some brand deals. <laughs> Let's keep that going also. And I'll see you guys very, very soon.